you're watching this video, you more than likely have an interest in Indonesian law or in international arbitration that involves Indonesia. Indonesia is no stranger to the international dispute resolution world and certainly not to international arbitrations. As one of the biggest economies in the region, Indonesia naturally attracts substantial foreign investments and many of those investments across many commercial sectors typically plan to resolve disputes via international arbitration. In this video, I'm going to share a few key insights that would be useful for international arbitrations where the arbitration seat is Indonesia. I will start by briefly explaining the applicable legal regime in Indonesia. Next, I will identify certain unique features of Indonesia's arbitration law, particularly those that one should be mindful of to ensure successful enforcement in Indonesia. Finally, I will touch on the outlook of arbitration in Indonesia. But first, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hannah Askia. I'm an associate in King & Spalding Singapore office and a member of the firm's International Arbitration Group. I am Indonesian and I'm qualified to practice Indonesian law and I have specialised in investment treaty and commercial arbitration from the beginning of my legal career. What is the legal regime? The applicable legal regime in Indonesia is civil law. Indonesia, civil law country intermixed with local customary law and the Roman Dutch law. The Dutch colonial occupation of Indonesia for 350 years left a legacy of Dutch colonial law which is reflected in the Indonesian Civil Code, Indonesian Commercial Code and the old Indonesian Criminal Code. Indonesian law does not recognise dead decisis or the principle of binding precedent, but court decisions in practice nevertheless creates a useful source of reference in the judge's decision-making process. What do I need to know about arbitration in Indonesia? The governing law on arbitration in Indonesia is Law No. 30 of 1999 on Arbitration and Alternative Dispute Resolution. Enacted on 12 August 1999, the arbitration law replaced the old provisions on arbitration contained in the Civil Procedure Code, which was inherited from the Dutch colonial period. Indonesia is not a model law country, as the arbitration law does not adopt the ancestral model law on international commercial arbitration. However, the arbitration law does address most of the important aspects of arbitration, such as the requirements of an arbitration agreement, the constitution of arbitrations, the power of the courts to assist arbitration proceedings, and the recognition and enforcement of arbitral awards. Here are some unique features of the arbitration law. One, an arbitration agreement must be in writing and signed by the parties to the dispute to be valid. Additionally, the parties also can, by agreement, choose to arbitrate after a dispute has arisen. 2. Only commercial disputes can be arbitrated. These include commerce, banking, finance, investment, industry and intellectual property rights. 3. A valid arbitration agreement eliminates the right of the parties to submit the dispute to the courts. 4. Parties can arbitrate domestically and internationally, but an arbitration seated in Indonesia will be considered as a domestic arbitration, regardless of the nationality or characteristic of the parties, the governing law or the involvement of any foreign seated institutions. 5. Bahasa Indonesia is the default language in domestic and international arbitration, unless the parties provide otherwise in the contract or subsequently agree otherwise after the arbitration commences with the tribunal's approval. 6. Unlike the default rule in the Institutional Model Law that requires hearings unless the parties agree otherwise, the arbitration law provides that a case is decided based on the documents unless the parties or the tribunal wish to have an arbitration hearing. 7. For enforcement of a domestic arbitration award, that award must be registered with the relevant district court within 30 days from the date of the award. An international arbitration award, however, has no time limit for registration for enforcement. 8. An international arbitration award may be enforced in Indonesia only after obtaining an exequatur, also known as an official authorization permitting execution. To register an international arbitration award, a power of attorney from the tribunal to the party or its counsel is necessary because under the arbitration law, the responsibility for registration lies with the arbitral tribunal, not the parties. 
The power of attorney is granted as a collective by the tribunal, but individual tribunal members may sign the power of attorney on separate copies. The power of attorney must be signed before a notary at the place of signature, and where the place is not Indonesia, the signer notarized power of attorney must also be legalized. It is recommended that the parties ask the power of attorney to be released at the same time as the award or its difficulties arising from reasons such as the tribunal being functus officio. 9. The grounds for annulment of arbitration awards are far more restrictive than those under the Uncitral Model Law. Permitted grounds are where there is fraud, forgery or concealed material documents. Finally, what does the future hold for arbitration in Indonesia? The Indonesia's arbitration future looks promising. Today, far more parties are interested than before to settle their dispute through alternative dispute resolution methods, particularly arbitration. As an example, there is a recent proliferation of new arbitral institutions in Indonesia and a great interest in arbitration trainings, whether to have more general knowledge about the arbitration process or as a next step towards becoming an arbitrator. Thank you for taking your time to watch this video. Stay tuned for the next one in the Spotlight One series. Thank you.